I welcome you to the short talk about Project Altair, where the goal is to extend the flight duration of fixed-wing UAVs. Let me start with first explaining our vision in Project Altair. Previous work has shown that energy sources from the environment can be exploited if the UAV stumbles upon one. Thermal updrafts, which are caused by temperature difference on the ground, are one example for such energy sources. Another example are ridge lifts. Those are updrafts caused by wind around steep terrain. Our goal is to make those energy sources visible to the UAV such that it can exploit them to extend the flight duration and range. If we can create the heat map of the ground, we can detect the temperature gradients that could indicate possible thermal locations. We can also try to directly detect the rising hot and humid air of a thermal. By predicting the local wind using measurements from the UAV, we can predict ridge lift's location but also the shape of a thermal column above a hotspot on the ground. In the end, we want to combine those detectors with a path planning algorithm on board the UAV to get real-time predictions of updrafts such that the flight path can be adjusted to extend the range and flight duration. I first want to tackle how we intend to create the heat map of the ground. To do so, we designed MultiPoint, a learning-based keypoint detector and descriptor, which is an extension of SuperPoint to the multispectral domain. This enables us to detect landmarks that are visible in both the optical and thermal spectrum and use them in a mapping framework. One key difference to SuperPoint is the generation of keypoint labels. We extend the concept of homographic adaptation to the multispectral domain. Similar to SuperPoint, we warp the images first with a randomly sampled homography. We then utilize a base detector to get a heat map of keypoint probabilities for each image individually. But then we combine the heat maps with a pixel-wise multiplication to only get labels that have a strong response in both spectra. After aggregating the heat maps for all different homographies, we get viewpoint invariant labels that are consistent in both spectra. In a few cases, multipoint and the baseline methods fail to produce good matches between the optical and thermal image. But in general, multipoint results in more correct matches than the baseline methods. In this example here, SuperPoint and SIFT. On a test set of optical and thermal image pairs, MultiPoint outperforms the baseline method by a wide margin, especially in the task of producing key points and descriptors for homography estimation. This work has been presented at the conference on robot learning last year and the code is available on GitHub. In the future, we will use MultiPoint in a mapping framework to generate a heat map of the ground. Now we will move on from indirectly detecting thermals based on a heat map to directly visualizing the rising column of hot air. Temperature differences in air deflect the light rays, resulting in a slightly distorted background image. Using background-oriented Schlieren techniques based on optical flow methods, the invisible flow, as shown here in the optical spectrum, can be made visible. While in lab, with a static background, we are getting great results we are still working on generalizing and robustifying the method to natural backgrounds and moving camera. In the last part of this talk, I will present the work we have done in wind prediction to detect ridge lift. For this task, we trained a convolutional neural network using simulated flows from CFD simulations. The network gets as an input the terrain and a few noisy wind measurements and predicts the wind in high resolution over the full domain. The resulting model learned to predict the flow around complex terrain well using only a few measurements. In this case, for example, the measurements cover only 0.03% of the full domain and the prediction matches the CFD simulation well. To test how well our method works with real data, we went out to Chasseral, a ridge in Switzerland, to collect data with multiple UAVs. We equipped the UAVs with the appropriate airflow sensors to get a high-quality wind estimate. Using only a small segment from the full flight results in the following sparse measurements covering only a small part of the full domain. However, the model is able to predict a reasonable flow that respects the terrain. For example, when observing a slice of the flow, we can see that the flow is sped up on top of the ridge. When looking at the vertical wind prediction, we can see that an updraft and downdraft are predicted at the correct sides of the ridge. We are currently working on a framework to validate the predictions between different UAVs. In this talk, 
I presented you three different approaches to visualize the invisible energy sources from the environment. Within the next year, the goal is to complete those approaches and combine them in one framework to extend the flight duration of fixed-wing UAVs.